What is going on Nerd Squad and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. I'm your host for today, Taylor McWaters, and on today's list, we'll be looking at some X-Men members that pack a punch, specifically mutants who may not seem to be as powerful as they are at first. Since their comic book debut back in 1963, there have been dozens of X-Men. Either they go out like a hero, like our number one pick on this list, or they stick around long enough for their powers to make them turn to the dark side. Whatever the case may be, there's tons of underrated characters, so without further ado, here are the top 10 strongest X-Men you wouldn't expect. Let's dive in. Kicking off the list at number 10, we have Multiple Man. James Madrox, he made his first comic book appearance in Giant Size Fantastic Four, issue four, and right off the bat, he seems very soft-spoken, he seems very gentle. I mean, the thing is yelling at him and he's literally like, why do you reject me? Why? Like he's so almost poetic in a way. And then when the thing goes to clobber him, bam, there's multiple more men. Now he wasn't used very much in the X-Men, but he spent most of his days with X-Factor, but this guy is underrated. His powers may seem kind of weak compared to somebody like Jean Grey, but these duplicates can each make a duplicate. Let me try something. I'm Mr. Meeseeks, look at me. Hi, Mr. Meeseeks, I'm Mr. Meeseeks, look at me. Hi. At one point, this guy had 40 of him running around town, 40. Now the duplicates think, they feel, and they act independently, but they're guided by the original James Madrox. In a way, they're guided. They like kind of know what to do. Each of these duplicates manifests one aspect of James' personality, and the longer the time away, the more those traits become extreme. And if one of these duplicates passed away, he can sense that the general area where the body is, which is like the saddest radar ever. This guy could take over the world if he wanted. It would be like that scene from The Matrix, but with more monologues probably. And before we go on to this list of X-Men, you probably wouldn't expect to be that powerful. Guys, if you want to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, just right there, just give it a little tap tap, and it helps our studio out quite a bit. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get back to the list. Lickety split. Number nine, Darwin. We saw this next mutant for a hot minute in X-Men First Class. He was played by Eddie Gathegi, who unfortunately didn't survive too long. See, he threw his life down on the line in order to protect his fellow X-Men. And this was still in the early days too. What a champ. He first showed up in the comics in 2005 with X-Men Deadly Genesis issue 2. Armando Munoz looked a lot different than we saw on screen as well. Since he was 4 years old, he was bald, his arms were super long, and his eyes were changing. He sure looks a little bit different than the young handsome actor that we saw in the movie. His ability comes in handy a lot actually, more so in the X-Men movies. See in the comics, he's practically immortal. His ability once allowed him to survive Hela's death touch. I mean, it's a little bit different than the last time we saw him, that's for sure. Number eight, Caliban. An albino mutant and former member of the Morlocks, Caliban made his first comic book appearance in Uncanny X-Men 148. So he has the ability to track down any mutant. He actually sacrifices himself in the movie Logan, where Stephen Merchant played him. He was also in X-Men Apocalypse for a bit too, played by a different actor. He was played by Tomas Lamarcus. He was originally an ally to the X-Men, but once he became a tracker for Apocalypse in X-Factor issue 24, titled The Fall of the Mutants. So he's pretty powerful, and he's done a lot of cool stuff too. He may seem like a gentle, lanky, pale man, but when Caliban is stressed out in the comics, he gains two additional powers, super strength and fear absorption. So if you put him in a corner, he'll be able to absorb the psionic energy in your fear and use it to power himself up even more. Number seven, Glob Herman, AKA Robert Herman, although Glob is much more fun to say, he made his debut at New X-Men issue 117 and he grew up with a father who despised mutants. So already he's off to a pretty rocky start. So when Glob mutated, his father was just not on board. So his mother drove Glob out to Westchester and just left him for Professor X. Like you leave a baby at a fire station. It's just like, yep, here you go, your problem now. This mutation was interesting. So his skin was this transparent living wax, which he's able to maintain being on fire, which is pretty amazing off the bat. You can light him on fire and he's good to go. That's amazing. He runs with the new mutants now, and although his name is Silly and he's literally a glob, he can also possess powers of super strength and super speed, despite how he may look. So he can get hit by these massive bombs like it's nothing, then he can fight whoever launched that bomb with ease. The X-Men literally once used him as a heat shield once, they strapped glob to the front of their ship and it didn't seem pleasant for a man glob but he was good he didn't die or anything he was just he had to rest for a bit number six toad when you think of the name toad in relation to a superhero you're going to picture something pretty silly in your head and mortimer toneby isn't that far off from what you think he made his first appearance in uncanny x-men issue four so he hops around which seems silly but his legs are so strong that he can leg press three tons. And it's not just his legs that are strong, his upper half possesses superhuman strength as well. His arms can lift about one ton. 
It also has flexible bone structure, regenerative healing factor, infrared vision, and the best part, his 30 foot long tongue can also act as a whip. And it can secrete venom that can give him mind control over your body. And his saliva is acid as well. Number five, Wither. Making his first appearance in New Mutants Volume 2, Issue 3, Kevin Ford grew up thinking that he was cursed, or he was the most unlucky person ever, one or the two. See, his mutant power started manifesting, and then he noticed it first in his plants, and then he noticed it in his clothes, and then he noticed it in people. So what would happen is his plants would wither. They would wither and they would die. And then his clothes were starting to decay as well. So once his father figures out this mutation, he tries to calm him down, but coming into contact with him, obviously the inevitable happens. He sees the world in this lifeless or decaying way now. See, it's part of this mutation. He can disintegrate all forms of organic matter just by one touch. Whatever he touches withers, so now we get his name. It turns into dust within seconds, whatever it is. Now this seems boring, I guess. When you think of it in like a cinematic battle, it's not too exciting. But this guy can take out an entire elite squad just by touching them. I mean, realistically, just send him in always. No one's gonna expect it. All you have to do is get him to fist bump everybody and then bam, just like that. No more bad guys. Number four. Nocturne. This next one, she comes from Earth 2182, where she's the daughter of Nightcrawler and Scarlet Witch. Now, she's got her dad's looks, unfortunately. She's blue, furry, she's got three fingers and three toes. She's got a tail and yellow eyes and pointed ears. Now, sure, she looks like she can take out any bad guy, like she looks like an alien. So she possesses the powers of both of her parents. She can blast off energy bolts, she can climb walls, but what makes her even more powerful is that she has the ability to possess others for 12 hours or one lunar cycle. But once that timer is up, the victim is just completely out of it for 24 hours, just comatose. This super offspring packs a super punch, that's for sure. Number three, Tattoo. Christine Cord made her comic book debut in the new X-Men issue 126. She was a student of the Xavier Institute and she's known as Tattoo, well, because her mutation allows her to display messages or designs on her skin and she can phase through matter, which is also kind of fun. She's pretty awesome. I mean, when you first think of her, you may just think of the skin messages and be like, oh, whatever, maybe she's a spy. Maybe she can be like, send help and then use her skin. Cool, that's good. But check this out. Tattoo actually phased her hand into Cyclops' head once and told him that if she becomes solid, he would not survive to see the end of it. How awesome is that? But she sadly lost her powers during the events of M-Day, but if you ever ran into Christine again, she would probably surprise you with her new ability. When she was released from jail, she joined the New Warriors and was given her own stilt man armor, becoming Longstrike. So bam, two and one, talk about underrated. Number two, Banshee. The Screaming Banshee, okay. He made his first appearance in X-Men issue 28. Sean Cassidy was born as the heir to the castle and estate of Cassidy Keep, Ireland. Now, Professor Xavier asked him to join the X-Men at the same time as Thunderbird, and they both stayed as members of the new X-Men. Now, he went on to train the new generation of X-Men in Generation X, but he sadly lost his life during Deadly Genesis when he was trying to stop Blackbird from crashing when it was taken over. So when you think of an X-Men who screams so loud he can hurt people, eh, it's impressive on its own, sure, but his screams are actually stronger than we really think. His screams can actually break through an inch of steel. And with these wings that Professor X developed for him, he's able to harness this power and use his screams as energy to help him fly. So he can do so much more with his voice as well. He can tighten the sound waves around himself to make a sonic shield, and he can influence your subconscious by changing the tones and vibrations of his voice. He can literally change your mind. How awesome is that? What do you mean you want a divorce? Uh... And finally, number one, we have my favorite on the list, Bailey Hoskins. Okay, I have to talk about this poor kid, okay. Strongest X-Men you wouldn't expect? Yeah, that is for sure Bailey Hoskins. The only appearance of this kid is in the 2016 miniseries, X-Men, Worst X-Man Ever, which is a pretty cruel name. He was a student at Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, and his power is pretty spectacular. He can self-detonate, he can make himself explode, and you would never expect it just by looking at him. I mean, come on. He reminds me of Hogarth from the Iron Giant. He's such a cute kid. The thing is, he can only use this fantastic ability once. And his last issue in the comics was X-Men Worst X-Man Ever, issue five. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Top 10 Nerd. I have been your host, Taylor McWaters. Look, drop us a comment down below. Which of these underrated X-Men is your favorite? Because we'd love to check them out as well. Like Bailey Hoskins, that could be a Disney Plus original right there. It would only be five episodes, that's for sure.
Mm. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.